Wow. Okay. You you mentioned Will Smith. Um, mm-hmm. So I got to bring up. Did you, I mean, you're a fellow comedian. Mm-hmm. Chris Rock just did his comedy special. You mm-hmm. have obviously an allegiance to Will because Will, he was the catalyst to open so many doors for you. That mm-hmm. was your first real job. And he, he cherry picked you. Exactly. He spotted you and, and, and came and get, but you're a comedian. Right. Where, where does, how does this even uh, compute for you? Because I'm sure you have gone on stage and you, you said you, you performed uh, in Harlem at the Apollo. People get roasted in the Brother, crowd at the Apollo. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Anybody of a certain age, let's just say 30, let's just take 35 and older. Mm-hmm. We all know what the Apollo was all about. Yep. You up watching it, you knew the routine, you knew the drill. Um, you're bringing back memories right now, and it almost gives it almost gives me chills because when I did Apollo in 1991, I was terrified, like any any amateur. I mean, when you see stars that were getting booed off the stage, you're like, nigga, there is no chance for me this evening. How about I'm just get straight to it. When I did Apollo, that was back when Mark Curry was the host, 1991. Yep. And all, and it was 13 amateurs, and we all picked our numbers out of a hat. I thought God wasn't with me because I picked 13. I was like, why is this happening to me? My first time coming to New York, I paid my way to come here, and this is going to happen to me? 13 dudes picked, and I picked number 13. When I tell you, Sean, 12 comics in a row got booed off the stage. They were booing people on intros. This next guy, boo, all the way from boo. You're really gonna boo. I was I was shitting bricks backstage because I'm like, I don't have a chance. But Mark Curry knew me as one of the amateurs in LA and he had saw me a few times. He's like, you're a funny ass dude. He's like, you ain't gonna have no problem tonight. What do you want me to say to introduce you? He goes, first, I'm going to say, you're from L.A. I was like, nigga, no. That's the last thing I need is for you to say, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from L.A., like, no, I don't need to get booed before I even start. He's like, well, he said, you don't have any credits. I said, well, just say, this guy is really funny. I've seen him before. Give it up for Alex Thomas. Gave my intro. Now, mind you, we had to do three, three minutes. Three minutes when you're a new comic seems like three hours. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, Sean, it was the fastest. I did the fastest set I had. I don't even care if the audience heard me. I was like, I'm going to get through my little three minutes before y'all niggas boo me. He's like, give it up for Alex Thomas. Hey, how you doing? Thank you. (laughs) Stood up and gave me a standing ovation. I was like, if I first thing that went through my mind is they always say, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And I knew I had something because I saw what they had just did to 12. It's like everybody in the room had an AK-47 and it was just open seated, just hauling them down. So whatever I said to make them laugh, I was like, you know what? I feel like I might be able to do this business. And lo and behold, who was in the audience that night? Bob Sumner. Mm. You know who Bob Sumner is? Absolutely. Absolutely. Bob was the talent coordinator for this new show that was about to come out in about a year. This new show called Deaf Comedy Jam. He saw me that night. Cut to things are now rolling. Now I'm on Deaf Comedy Jam. You're the kid that got the standing ovation in Apollo. You know that don't happen too often, son. You know, that's an anomaly, yo. You know, I had people coming up here. You from Brooklyn, son? You know, you, you from Queens? Are you you from the block? You from Yonkers? From Long Island? You from Forty First Side? Where you from? You got your New York dialect down packed. Yeah, you, you, you from Best Style, yo? I'm like, nigga, no. And ever since then, for thirty years now, I've been one of those LA comics that can go to New York 
and rip any room to pieces. That was just always my material was very universal. It wasn't that, you know, I'm be honest, I'm not going to say names. I've seen New York comics come to LA and bomb. I've seen LA comics go to New York and bomb, but I've seen those same dudes kill in rooms. I've seen them kill before, but it's like, it's so kind of like local material. You come to LA talking about what happened in the bodega up on 125th street. That like, niggas, yeah, like what the fuck is a bodega? He don't know he could change that word to liquor store. Uh huh. Uh huh. He don't know. Nigga, food is still everywhere. It's just I was always right in the middle, where I was able to go to any city in America and kill. So I love New okay, York. So, so I, I got I got to circle you back around because you yeah. are a comedian, right? Yeah. Yeah. People within eye shot, God forbid you in the first row. Mm -hmm. it, it is traditional that you get roasted. You can put on your best attire. You Are you talking about from the comedian, us to roast somebody in the audience? Yes, oh, yes. Of course, of course. All, so I, I, Chris Rock just did a special. Yep. And I got, how, how, how does it land with you as a comedian? Because Chris, he told a joke. He didn't do anything that no other comedian has, since the beginning of time, hasn't done. Mm -hmm. it slapped on national TV for it. Mm -hmm. And slapped by a dear friend of yours. Mm -hmm. where, where, where does your thought process even lie when you see that happening, number one, to a guy who took your career from zero to 100 mm -hmm. real quick, mm -hmm. and then to a fellow peer who's at the top of his game? Well, it was a tough night for me because I'm friends with both of them. Obviously, I'm way closer to Will than I am to Chris. But I was like, oh, this shit is not good right now. And I'll just tell you basically my thoughts and what I ended up bringing to the stage. Because obviously I had to address it. Because mm -hmm. everywhere I went after that, or for the rest of my life, people are going to ask me, so what did you think about that whole Chris Rock, Will Smith situation? Mm -hmm. Long story short, Will made a mistake that night. Um, his last name is not Christ. I don't know anybody on this planet that has never made a mistake. Uh, he didn't kill anybody. He made a mistake. I don't care if you're a billionaire, you can still make mistakes. It, was, it wasn't a good look. Um, biggest night of his career. Biggest accomplishment. It was overshadowed because unfortunately what happened, right? Um, what I took to the stage, I basically said, uh, I just think uh, ain't going to be no black folks at the Oscars for a long, long time. I said, in, in fact, it's going to get so bad next year. They're going to ban black tuxedos. OK, it's going to be the it's going to be the first all white affair. Santa Claus might end up being the host next year. Right. Because a lot of people don't realize this, Sean. The night started off incredible. It was actually the blackest Oscars in the history of Oscars. That night mm. was black producers, black yep. writers. I mean, it was black seat fillers. There was black nominees. There was black winners. I heard they had potato salad backstage. It was really a black, D-Nice D was the DJ. Do you know that in, in Oscar history, there had never been a DJ? So for the fact that Will Packer, being a black producer just bought the whole element of black folks to the highest level, it was amazing. It started off incredible until we got slapped back 400 years. I mean, it started out as the Oscars and then one slap ended up being the Source Awards in 2.1 seconds. You know what I mean? And it's just, un it's just unfortunate that that happened, man. And then Chris, as far as his special, a year later, hey man, he vented. He, he 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 let it all out. And you can't be mad at that man because at the end of the day, he was the victim. And it's almost like when we're talking about roasting and people in the front row and as a comic, there's also a decision to be made every night you go on stage. Like as a professional like Chris, right? All of us professionals, we have different material for different nights and different situations. A young comic, an up and coming comic, 
ain't got it like that yet. He doesn't have different sets. Oh, this joke, I can't do. He's just trying to be funny, however, by any means necessary. It was like that was one joke that backfired on him. But nobody can say, don't say it. He felt it. Chris is a legend. Chris is one of the funniest dudes to ever do it. He made that decision. He did it. Unfortunately, that happened. You know what I mean? It happened. It'll go down in history. It's something that will never, ever be forgotten. Um, I liked Chris's special. I still think he's one of the funniest dudes to ever do it. When it got to the will part, his real feelings came out. You, you, you saw the difference. And you, people, you and people it, all this, it went from all of a sudden to, from funny, these are my jokes, to this is how I feel about that nigga, and I'm going to let it all off my chest. Everybody has to rehabilitate different. He could have went to an entire year of therapy. But as comics, any real com comedian will tell you the stage is our therapy. I could have a bad day, Sean, but have a great set on stage tonight and all that shit get wiped away. I could have went through some crazy mess in my own personal life, but every time I'm on that stage, that is my sanctuary. You hear that with athletes a lot. When they're on that field, everything, it's like the world goes silent. And it's all about my craft of what got me here. And it's therapeutic for us. So as being a comedian that's a veteran, a triple OG, I felt his pain when he did that set. He had to get it off his chest somehow, some way. And he, he did it to the best of his ability. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.